It's Friday, and today we're going to focus our global section on the U.S. presidential election that's now just four days away. And our Eunice Kim joins us at the touch screen today. Hello. Hello. All right, so Eunice, we're nearing the moment of truth, and throughout this week we saw some investor jitters in a form of pretty heavy volatility. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We are in the final stretch now in that race between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, and those jitters pronounced as we saw their gap narrow in the polls after FBI Director James Comey brought Clinton's email issue back into the national dialogue. Now, here's what's called the fear index or VIX. At the end of the Asian trading day on Wednesday, it shot up over the 20-point mark to a two-and-a-half week high. Analysts say it's the market caught off guard, having not priced in a potential Trump presidency. Now, Safe Haven Gold also uh, saw a regaining its momentum, as did the Japanese yen against the greenback, as well as the Mexican peso falling, as you see there. So the world has been watching this particular race very closely as it has been no ordinary race. So oh, yeah. how are we looking right now and what should be, we be looking for next week? So what's going to matter at the end of the day is electoral votes, not popular votes. And there are 538 electors split up like this throughout the 50 states plus Washington, D.C. Now, it takes 270 to win the U.S. presidency. And as you can see, Hillary Clinton has the support of the states with large cities like New York and California, while Donald Trump's support is strongest along the Bible Belt. Uh, reminiscent of the demographics we saw back in June. Now, in the Brexit referendum, Londoners strongly supported remaining in the EU, but it was folks living in in the outskirts who really pushed that tight vote over. Battleground states Americans will be watching include Florida, North Carolina, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah, to name a few. And crucially, Trump will have to take a blue state from Hillary to take him to 270. And of course, this is a race that's very important to Korea as well, considering what Trump has said during his campaign about Korea if he becomes president, mm -hmm. with one of them being letting the peninsula go nuclear and also making Korea pay more for U.S. troops present in Korea, as well as potentially revising the chorus FTA. Right, which all could have deep ramifications for the geopolitics of the region. In fact, Moody's analysts recently called this October race one of the most immediate event risks for the global economy, as a change in U.S. policy stance could contribute to a weakening of global trade and security architecture. Now, I spoke with a longtime Korea resident and Professor Robert Kelly to delve into this further. Take a look. For many in Korea and Asia at large, the choice has been clear. A win Gallup poll of 44,000 people across 45 countries has shown overwhelming support for Hillary Clinton. Among Koreans polled, more than 8 in 10 supported the former Secretary of State. Trump has said we should pay more for the U.S. armed forces in South Korea and renegotiate the free trade deal. If that happened, it could be really bad for Korea. That's why I think Hillary is better for us. Political scientist and longtime Korea resident Robert Kelly agrees. I think the answer is almost certainly Hillary Clinton. Um, Donald Trump is so erratic, he's so unpredictable. I think that Donald Trump would be terrible for almost all of America's foreign um, relationships and partnerships, Korea included. Well, Hillary represents many, in many ways the status quo. Kelly points out, despite having publicly stepped aside from the TPP trade deal that she once vouched for, Hillary Clinton, during a debate, had explicitly said she would stand by the American security guarantee if she becomes president. Which is fairly remarkable. I mean, that's a pretty, you know, pretty direct um, declaration that, um, that things wouldn't change under her administration. Donald Trump has made some big promises, including bringing jobs back to the U.S., on his website, his campaign claims that a trade deal with Korea has not only, quote, killed nearly 100,000 jobs, but America's trade deficit with Korea has more than doubled, too. 
But many economists point out much of the millions of manufacturing jobs lost since 2000 were the victims of technology and the new lifestyles that it brings. Even if Trump provokes these kinds of trade wars, I'm not really sure that he can actually get back these jobs that are required. I mean, the real issue is that the United States is a high income economy. Low tech jobs will leave a high income economy like the United States. This is also happening in Korea. Right. And they go where it's cheaper. This demographic of unemployed blue collar workers in the states has been growing for the past 30 to 40 years. Kelly says a watershed moment in inflaming distrust of the elite was the 2007 housing bubble, which left many jobless and homeless with wrecked credit. I would say probably the single biggest thing that probably convince people that global economic integration is good would be a reduction in inequality. So what you need then is sort of greater rule of law, thicker democratization, right? A genuine concern about equality, you know, more progressive taxation, things like that. All right, so President Clinton or President Trump will have to brace for it next week. But whoever becomes the next president, they will have a very big task at hand, especially in addressing inequality. Right. Inequality is definitely a theme that has resonated in this campaign cycle, but it's not just the disenfranchised. This week, PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel told reporters he was voting for Donald Trump to make a statement about the current leadership. Now, I don't agree with everything Donald Trump has said and done, and I don't think the millions of other people voting for him do either. Nobody thinks his comments about women were acceptable. I agree they were clearly offensive and inappropriate. But I don't think the voters pull the lever in order to endorse a candidate's flaws. It's not a lack of judgment that leads Americans to vote for Trump. We're voting for Trump because we judge the leadership of our country to have failed. Food for thought. One thing's for sure, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will be campaigning hard through the weekend to become that president that decides for the next four years. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that race next week. Thank you so much for all that today. You bet.